Directed by Sebastian Hilger and Philip Lehman, the signal starring Perry Baumeister, Yona Bennett and Florian David Fitz in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the German sci-fi drama releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and discuss some hidden details of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot. The show begins with Sven waking up in the morning after having a vision of his wife Paula, who reminds him of how much she loves him. He then wakes up his daughter Charlie who is partially deaf. They rush to a location where they see the live feed of his wife's descent from the ISS along with her colleague Hadi. While commencing the landing and opening the parachute, Paula freezes for a moment and Hadi panics. When she gets her consciousness back, she successfully makes a safe landing by opening the parachute at a crucial moment and they land in the middle of the Atacama Desert. She is welcomed by Benisha Muti, an Indian-born billionaire and philanthropist who sponsored their trip. Paula's daughter Charlie idolizes the woman and aspires to be like her one day. That night, Paula calls her husband and decides to share a secret with him, but before revealing what it is, she suspects someone is listening to their call, so she hangs up after speaking some irrelevant fact. The next morning, the father and daughter go to the airport to pick her up, but soon learn that the flight AE-760 Santiago de Chile has gone missing in the middle of the Atlantic and the whereabouts of the passengers are still unknown. At first Sven tries to hide it from Charlie but the smart girl catches up to the developments pretty soon. The authorities take all the relatives of the passengers to a hotel room to minimize the panic. Though Sven pretends to be unaffected by the news in front of Charlie, in his daughter's absence he gets emotionally shattered after realizing the fact that he might not see Paula ever again. He then tells his daughter the story about the Voyager mission. For those of you who don't know, the Voyager program is an American scientific program that consisted of two interstellar robotic probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. They were launched in 1977 to take advantage of the favorable alignment of the two gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and the ice giants Uranus and Neptune to fly near them and collect data to transmit to Earth. It also carried a golden disk consisting of all the major information and events of humankind. Their main goal was to find out if there were any interstellar species out there and if there is, they wanted to give them an idea that they are not alone. Soon Sven is asked to meet some federal agents who question him about any discrepancies that he might have noticed while talking to his wife and they also tell him about the parachute incident. On their way, they meet Nora, one of Moody's employees, who promises to help them. Before her departure, Paula along with her husband set a wireless transmission for Charlie to be in touch with her mother while in space. After getting there, she talks to Charlie on a regular basis but after reaching the no transmission zone, Paula still catches a frequency that imitates a kid's voice. Paula was not in her best mental state when she reached space but she refused to believe that the transmission was entirely her imagination. The next morning, Charlie gets to know that her mother might not ever return as Sven gets two new visitors who informed him that Paula entered the cockpit before the plane crashed. They play him a recording and Paula talks directly to Sven. She asks him to find help to raise Charlie as she believes he won't be able to do it alone. The agents believe that Paula and Hadi were the main reason that the flight encountered a crash which Sven refuses to accept. In the past, we saw Paula, Sven, Mira and Hadi hanging out together just before the astronauts were about to leave for their mission. All is well until Paula has a serious episode and ends up in the hospital. The series never really tells us what exactly Paula suffers from but it looks a lot like schizophrenia. Paula recovers but Sven is obviously worried and tries to convince her not to go on the mission. He doesn't want to lose her and while she confirms his fear and love for her, she also tells him that if she doesn't go into space, her life will become virtually meaningless to her anyway. Paula tells Sven that there are some things that are much bigger than her and that she has important reasons for undertaking this mission, such as finding something that will help their deaf daughter hear without digital or mechanical assistance. Eventually, Paula goes into space and doesn't hesitate to hide a report in which she clearly 
states that her blood contains psychotropic substances coming from the medication she has to take for her condition, something that would have prevented her from participating in the mission. At the ISS, Paula first thinks the sound might be her own daughter's voice breaking in between the communication, but she quickly realizes that they appear while they are in the dead zone above the Atlantic Ocean, where Earth has no contact with them. Paula records the whole thing and tells it to Hadi. Both are initially skeptical about sharing the discovery with their co-astronaut, but they eventually agree that it is too important a discovery not to share. But when Paula tries to tell Jake and the other astronaut about the voice and play her recording tape, she realizes that there is no voice. Hadi controls the situation by telling the British astronauts that they are just playing a prank. Paula then finds herself in a state of torment where she struggles with her mental health and begins to hallucinate. She finds it difficult to believe that what she hears is only happening in her head as Hadi tries to convince her. Luckily, it doesn't take long for her to discover that it's all real after all and that it's Hadi who is sabotaging her secret mission. She shares everything with Mudi who motivates her to handle the matter discreetly. Paula also admits that she lied to participate in the mission but Mudi doesn't get angry with her at all. She also reassures her that she did the right thing. Back on Earth from the recording, it is evident that Paula and Hadi forced their way into the plane's cockpit shortly before the crash. The relative of the passengers often try to find someone to blame and this time apparently they find it easy to put the dead astronauts in that seat and attack their families. Sven is clearly frustrated to see all these angry people outside his house at a time like this and is concerned for his child's well-being. Modi's assistant Nora visits them and assures the father that everything will be taken care of while also handing him a button of a direct channel for the billionaire herself. While Sven increasingly believes what the angry mob says about his wife, Charlie still feels like her mother is still alive. Charlie even claims that Paula is contacting her from somewhere, which frustrates Sven even more, and the two argue. Charlie eventually disappears and a paranoid and heartbroken Sven discovers that his daughter has actually received something over the radio from an address. The address is in the middle of nowhere where he eventually meets the old woman who greeted Charlie at the airport and who was also with the angry crowd outside her house. Charlie and Sven are visibly disappointed when they realize that it was not Paula but this old woman who tried to contact them. She happens to be an anti-government space enthusiast who follows Russian channels and she also heard the same hello in a child's voice that Paula recorded in space. The woman also recorded a conversation between a mother and and her child who appeared to be Paula and Charlie. Since then, she has been trying to contact Charlie and warn her about this government conspiracy that is taking place at a much higher level. The state is too afraid to deal with aliens, so if they get even the slightest hint that a UFO is approaching Earth's path, they will ultimately shoot it down. This is a logical security measure, but also not exactly wise because it takes away the opportunity for exploration and discovery which can also benefit our world. When Paula realizes that the signal is actually coming from a possible spaceship heading towards Earth, she quickly informs Mudi. She is also smart enough to deduce the exact coordinates of when and where this alien spaceship will land. But the biggest obstacle in her way is her friend and colleague Hadi who clearly is up to no good. The reason Hadi tries to sabotage Paula's discovery is because he clearly doesn't want the whole world to know about it. Hadi is not the mastermind however as he is part of a larger government conspiracy whose goal is to take down everything that comes into the world to protect us. But what Hadi lacks is Paula's ability to actually decipher the landing data of the spaceship headed our way. Hadi has no choice but to forcibly get the coordinates from her while keeping her trapped in the airlock with severe oxygen deprivation. Paula broadcasts the coordinates but she also makes sure the whole world knows about them. This can't prevent the state army from doing what it was designed to do, that is strike down everything that comes to attack the earth. But they don't realize that the coordinates they received from Hadi were wrong all along. Now that Paula has finally figured out how to win the game of fox and hare by being one step ahead of the fox. Over time, it becomes abundantly clear that the fox and the hare are metaphors used for the grey and white sides of the world order. When the media releases the full recording proving that Paula did not cause the accident, Sven is unable to ignore the warning signs and believes that the accident was caused by someone else. To get to the bottom of the matter, Sven realizes that Paula has revealed the coordinates of where the aliens will land on earth so that no one can hide the truth. But when the time comes, it turns out that Paula lied and gave the true coordinates to Charlie. 
After having an accident with an unknown pursuer, the father-daughter duo get help from Benisha Mudi, the billionaire who financed Paula Spee's mission. And unfortunately, after getting the coordinates from Charlie, Sven realizes that it was Mudi who caused the plane crash to keep both astronauts quiet. Mudi and her colleagues take the duo to the new landing area and realize that Paula had already discovered her boss's true motives and lied to them all. After the aliens don't land on the promised day and location, Mudi and her cult of alien worshippers order Nora to get rid of them but she spares their lives which leads to them being able to figure out the true coordinates and finally seeing the alien spaceship or rather the Voyager 1. Paula discreetly distributed the information between Charlie and Sven. She gave Charlie the right coordinates and gave Sven the exact D which is St. Patrick's D. The remains of the Voyager 1 probe fell down in the wider desert on the promised day. The hello that Paula heard from the ISS did not come from an alien species but from the golden record about Voyager 1. Interestingly we heard that the the only way Voyager could return to Earth was if someone or something sent it back to us. This automatically proves the existence of aliens near our solar system and it seems that in this fictional universe, they are not willing to destroy us but are interested in making contact and making peace with their fellow sentient beings. Indian Mudi gets arrested thanks to Nora's testimony as Sven and Charlie can finally say goodbye to Paula as her figure reappears in front of them. But the question still remains how do both of them see her at the same time. There is a slight possibility that both of them have similar psychological issues as Paula. But another reading might suggest that Paula was the chosen one and after the disappearance of the flight, she might have transcended into a higher dimension that is not entirely accessible to us humans. It is possible when the aliens arrive, they will educate the humans about how to access more than three dimensions and then all of them can coexist in a reality where time is a proper vector unit. It. According to the current theory of relativity, time is neither scalar nor vector. It is a part of a 4D vector. Before the discovery of relativity, the best answer would have been that it was a scalar unit. But today, physicists use the term scalar in a more sophisticated way. A scalar is something that has the same value in all coordinate systems. This is a specialized use of the word, but it is the use that all physicists currently do. So there lies the possibility that Paula now can coexist in different time frames at the same time. I guess I went a bit over overboard so let's focus on the happy ending part before Netflix announces a sequel of the series. The perfect fusion of science fiction and drama works in favor of the German Netflix limited series. Instead of giving a direct answer, it gives us a discussion between two sides, the curious and the astute. And for the most part, it's quite fascinating to watch. The central idea though doesn't seem entirely original as it is borrowed from various celebrated science fiction films and stories. But the way the signal pulls it off is truly commendable. The family dynamic which is always a problem in genre shows and films works really well here. And instead of going for a big twist that relies on shock value, the show chooses to follow a very logical and fair path which is commendable. I like the show very much for its subtle approach and less reliability on spectacles which is pretty rare in modern day sci-fi contents. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching The Signal on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off, off with Ashen and I'll be back.